thank you very much for attending today's webinar, and we are going to get started with showing you uh, how the new loop leader from Precision Digital is the loop power meter for you. To give me a better idea what the audience is that I'm speaking to, I'd appreciate your participation in the poll here. This will let me know if we've got end users, what kind of applications you might be running into, or if it's mostly our distributor network that's in the audience today. So I'll give you a minute to respond to that. And it looks like we've mostly got distributors in the audience today, which is just fine. Uh, for those of you who, uh, end users who may be here, hopefully you'll find some really valuable information as well. I think there's only one slide in there that's distributor specific, so don't worry about that. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started discussing how the new loop leader, which is our line of loop power meters that you see here on the screen, is the loop power meter for you. And we're going to do that by discussing what loop power meters are, why the loop leader is such a good one, and going a little bit more into detail about what the various features you'd see on a bullet list mean. So for starters, I'm Joe Ryan. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Precision Digital Corporation. I've got my contact info there on the screen if you have a need to uh, get in touch with me for anything. And as I said, we're going to address a couple of different things. This is not just a product webinar. We're going to talk about what loop power meters are, why you should be interested in them, and why that's sort of a defining term that's used when talking about them. We're going to talk about why that's important to you, why you might want to use loop power meters. And we're going to talk about what makes Precision Digital's new loop leader specifically a great new product that you should be aware of. Uh, and of course, it is a loop power meter, and we'll talk about why you want to use those in general, but really dive into the features and what those mean for you. So let's start with what are loop power meters? Well, by definition, a loop power meter is a display or a meter that's powered off the 420 milliamp loop that it's reading the signal from. And therefore, it requires no additional power in order to turn on and do its job of displaying and controlling. So what you see here on the left is your typical 4 to 20 milliamp loop. You've got a power supply that's used to drive the current. You've got some kind of a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. For example, that could be a, a level transmitter at the top of a tank. Now, in this case, it looks like it's a two-wire device. And then you've got the PLC that's reading that regulated 4 to 20 milliamp loop. Well, a loop power meter can go right in this one loop of wire. You can simply split it and add the loop power meter, and it is also just a two-wire device, meaning that you bring your milliamp plus and your milliamp minus in, and that's it. It draws all the power it needs to operate off of this 4 to 20 milliamp loop by dropping a few volts from what the power supply is able to provide. And we'll get a little bit more into that later. But that's the idea here is that it's very easy to install an existing loop just by breaking the loop in a convenient place and wiring those now two wires, because you broke one wire, and wiring those two ends into the meter. You don't need to have 24 volts available where the display is going. You don't need to have 120 volt AC available. Anywhere you happen to have any wire from this 4 to 20 loop running, you can install a loop power meter. Now, there's several different kinds of loop power meters available from Precision Digital, not to mention, of course, others. You've got your standard panel mount panel meters, like the loop leader, which is what we're here to talk about today. You see that on the left. That installs in an eighth thin cutout. But because loop power meters are so convenient, they're also available in explosion-proof housings with approvals for hazardous areas. So you can put the display anywhere in the hazardous area you want it to be without having to worry about power supplies. And we've even got it in a NEMA 4X plastic enclosure that's ready for field mounting. So again, you can put it anywhere you want to see that information. You wouldn't be measuring this information with your transmitters if it wasn't vital to your process. And this is a great way to put uh, what that information is right in front of the operators in the field very easily. So why do people use loop power meters? Why do people use these two-wire devices? Well, the easiest one, the, the, the most important one that I've already mentioned is it's easier to install than line power meters. So a line power meter, such as the ProView that you see here, 
is going to have a 4 to 20 milliamp input from a transmitter, but it's going to require a separate connection from an AC power supply or its own 24 volt supply in order to power that on. And so we call it a four wire meter because you've got to have two wires for your transmitter to bring in the 4 to 20, and you have to have two wires for your power supply in order to light up the unit. By contrast, your loop power meter, you just break the loop anywhere you want to put the meter, and you connect those two ends right to the meter. So you can see that it's easier to install in terms of there's less wiring, but you've also just got less parts involved. So what's the advantage of the fact that you don't need to have power supplies and all this other equipment in order to run your device? Well, you get indication where no additional power is available, where you don't have a power supply to turn on your display. So on the left here, you'll see they've got a loop power meter in a field mount enclosure. And this was added after the fact. This installation already existed. And they just wanted to be able to see what the level was on the side of the tank. So they got a feet and inches display with a percentage and a bar graph there. And they just attached it to the side of the existing box. The 4 to 20 milliamp wire came in through the conduit and passed through that enclosure. And so they just broke that existing wire added in the loop power meter, and they were done. They didn't have to put anything else in that cabinet in order to get that display to be running. And because it's in its own NEMA 4X field unit, they just plumbed it right up to the side of the box, and it's done, ready to be outdoors. Now on the right, at the bottom there, you'll see our new loop leader series meter. Uh, this is also showing a similar level display of what you could see if you wanted to put it in the panel. So had they decide to uh, put an eighth inch hole in that panel and install it in there. They could have gotten a panel meter display as well. And you'll see it's the exact same display. So you've got your feet and inches, you've got your percentage, and then you've got a bar graph on the side, which also shows you percentage above the bar graph, because as we'll talk about later, that bottom display doesn't have to show percent. It could show volume. It could show weight. It could be any kind of secondary scale that I want in addition to feet and inches. Tank side level indication when your transmitter is on top of the tank is probably the number one reason that people use uh, loop powered panel meters or loop powered meters in general from our experience. Uh, you don't want to have to go climbing tanks. And if you do go climbing tanks, you don't want to have to read those little displays that are on the transmitters. Those really are meant for programming and setup, and you're only really meant to look at them once. They don't help the operators in the field. And so putting something at grade level or eye level next to the tank is a great way to make your, your operators' lives easier. Saves them from having to climb up on tanks. In some cases, you can't even easily get up on the tanks, like the one shown on the left here. But you've put a couple of loop power meters down at the bottom of the tank, where your 4 to 20 milliamp wires are running anyway. And now you've got a very convenient, inexpensive way to see what's going on in your tanks. Because we've got the feet and inches version of it, it also makes a great substitute to old uh, level systems like the ones you see there on the right, where you've got these sliding float scales. There's lots of other reasons why you might want to use the loop power meter. Uh, though granted, not all of the ones shown in these pictures are. They do get the point across of the kinds of places that these transmitters get installed. Sometimes you've got transmitters that don't have uh, total on them, despite the fact that they're a flow transmitter. Or maybe they're not even a flow transmitter. Maybe they're a a level transmitter and you're using it for open channel flow, something like that. Well, you can get a loop power meter that does total. Transmitters are all often in really tough to get to places, like down on the floor or up above the rafters or on the top of a tank. Well, you want to get a convenient to install, low cost way to see that transmitter information, you can use a loop power meter for that. Dimly lit areas is another place you can put a loop power meter because even though they get their power from the loop, they can have backlights on them to light up their LCD and make them easy to read. And as I said, really the number one uh, location we see for them is attaching to give a tank side display when your transmitters are on top of tanks. So all that having been said about general loop power meters, why you'd use them and where you'd use them, what specifically makes the loop leader a great loop power meter? Well, I give you a couple of the bullets here. I'm not going to step you through every one, but you can see there's, there's a lot of them, uh, from the 1.5 volt drop, which we can talk about in a minute and what that means, to the red alarm backlight, uh, all the way down to the fact that we have hazardous area versions of this product. So you can put them in uh, areas that require non-incentive or intrinsically safe approvals. 
Now, while I'm here, I'll note that uh, Ken has typed in a question asking, do these change the calibration of the loop you install them in? That's a great question. As you remember, you're, you're breaking your transmitter loop and you're attaching your two-wire meter into that. Does that change the calibration of your loop power meter? Does it change what your PLC is reading? And the answer to that is no, it does not. The beauty of, of this kind of system electrically is that the transmitter will regulate the current in the loop, and that current will be the same everywhere in the loop at any point in the loop. And no matter how many of these loop power devices you add into that loop, the transmitter is going to do its job, and it's going to keep that 4 to 20 signal regulated. So you can go up to an existing system, you can add this into that 4 to 20 loop, and you shouldn't have to recalibrate or reconfigure anything else that was already in that system. So hopefully that answers your question, Ken. Again, if anybody else has other questions, feel free to type them into your uh, chat window, which is in the lower left of most of your screens. So I've got a short video to show you that will walk you through some of those features. I do apologize in that I don't think that video is going to be uh, audible to those of you who have dialed in on the phone. To those of you who on computer connections, you'll be able to hear that. So for those of you on the phone, I just ask you to uh, watch with us, if you will, although I know you may not be able to hear it. But before we jump to the video, I've got another couple quick poll questions, just to give me an idea of who's in the audience. And I'm wondering, how often do you specify digital displays? Is this something you run into once in a while, or is this something that you're working with all the time? And I'll give you a moment to answer. All right, and let's see what we've got here. So it looks like you run into these uh, fairly often. Um, the majority of you run into them three to ten times per year or more, uh, although it does look like there are some of you who think you've never run into this. Well, hopefully you uh, run into this sort of thing more often now that you'll learn a thing or two about how they can be valuable for you. Thanks for those last-minute answers from those of you who just jumped in. And then lastly here, I've got, what is the level of your experience with 4 to 20 million current loops? Are the things I've been talking about here uh, already things you're an expert on, or is this the first time you've been exposed to those? Uh, this will help as we get a little further into the presentation. Uh, perhaps I can answer some questions at the end, for example, uh, that will let me know what your level of expertise is and uh, how simplified or how deep into the information I should go. And it looks like, not surprisingly, uh, at exactly 70%, that's kind of interesting, we have enough to get the job done is the most popular response. And I, I find that in a lot of the webinars that we do. You know, these are things that people have learned from the need to do it. And so good for you for learning how to get it done, but hopefully you pick up a thing or two here. So let's take a look at that video. The Loop Leader Series is a line of loop-powered 1 8 DIN panel meters designed to provide you with a simple, low-cost, yet highly efficient display and control solution. These meters provide convenient and informative indication of any 4 to 20 milliamp signal and can be installed virtually anywhere because they get their power from the 4 to 20 milliamp loop and only drop 1.5 volts. The Loop Leader Series is equipped with features never before offered on loop-powered meters. One of the most convenient features is the dual line display. It lets you display your process variable on the five digit top line and the units or tag on the eight digit bottom line. The rate totalizer models allow you to display both rate and total at the same time. Both display lines use 14 segment alphanumeric characters for clearer indication of tags, units, or alarm messages. The display is equipped with a loop powered two color backlight to give you optimum visibility in any lighting or alarm condition. A bar graph is available on select models. You can use it to represent level, rate, or total percentages. The front panel offers easier programming with its four buttons and NEMA 4X IP65 protection against wet and dirty environments. Two solid state relays allow you to control and alternate up to two pumps, perform batch control operations, and drive alarm devices. The 4 to 20 milliamp output lets you retransmit the input signal or rescale it to output another range. 
All loop leaders come equipped with two open collector outputs. You may use these to trigger alarms, act as timers, or output a pulse signal. Choose from process meter and rate totalizer models, both available with a decimal display and a decimal display with bar graph. Unique models with a feet and inches display and bar graph are also available, perfect for your level applications. All loop leaders are CE marked and UL and CUL listed for electrical safety. Models for use in hazardous areas are available with ATEX, IECEX, and UL and CUL intrinsically safe and non-incentive ratings. Get a more advanced display and control solution with the Loop Leader series. See what more they have to offer your application at predig.com slash loopleader. All right, thank you very much for watching with us. And hopefully that helps explain some of the features of the new loop leader that might be useful to you. So let's go back to our uh, discussion of those features and how they can be helpful. So obviously we believe the loop leader is a great product for everybody who's here in the audience. And we have a lot of features on it. However, the important thing to remember about this product is that it really is all about the display. That's why you buy a product like this. And so for the Loop Leader series, we've got three forms of display on the process meter. We've got the PD6602 and 06, depending on if your safe area or hazardous area. And that shows you your basic decimal display with a second line that can be used for uh, either a second scale, as we'll see in a minute, uh, or for a unit like we have displayed on here, or a tag. Then you've got the 660408, which has a bar graph added to that display. And you can see that with that bar graph, you also get a percentage displayed above the bar graph, in this case, 73%. And then we have a feet and inches display version, which is ideal for tanks. And we came up with this one because tanks were so popular for this kind of device. Uh, because tanks are specified in feet and inches, and intuitively, people tend to understand it better. So rather than showing them that they've got 2,047 inches, you can tell them that instead, well, you've got 19 feet, 10 inches, and 12 sixteenths. And with that feet and inches display, you also get the bar graph with the percentage. Bar graphs equate to tank height very well. So again, just with a glance, your operators understand what's happening. And you can even put the label on the bottom line. So in this case, for example, you've got tank 12. We also have rate totalizers. In this case, we don't have a feet and inches rate totalizer <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, but you've got your decimal version of the rate totalizer, in this case with uh, rate on the top and grand total on the bottom because you've got both total and grand total available. And then in the 66, 24, and 28 versions, you've got the same features with the rate total and grand total ability, but you've also got the bar graph on there. So percentage or seeing a graphical representation of a rate or total range is important to you, you can get the bar graph on that as well. Other nice display features we have is the ability to indicate when you've reached an alarm state through four different means. The most visual one, of course, being that when you reach that alarm state, as you can see here, my gallons are increasing, and oh, I've gone over 1,000 gallons, my backlight turns red. That is a striking way to get people's attention, regardless of where they are, no matter how far away they are, they're going to see that this particular panel meter has turned red and get people's attention. It also has the ability to flash. And when it goes into that alarm state, you can see that we toggle between the units, gallons, and a custom alarm message, which you can program to be anything you'd like. In this case, we just have it saying high alarm, but you could have it indicate an action to take or um, the, the ID assigned to a particular tank or transmitter. And then lastly, we've got the little alarm indicator in the lower right just to let people know that it needs attention. I've talked a few times about our dual scale feature. That's the ability on the process meters to show two scales from the same 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So to be clear, this is accepting one 4 to 20 milliamp input. However, it can scale that input into two different engineering units. So I could use the bomb display just to say tank 12 or gallons, or I could use it for this dual scale feature. 
And so, for example, in a tank level application, maybe I want to show my height in inches, and I want to show my gallons, or I want to show gallons in volume, and I want to show a percent, or I want to show uh, gallons, and I want to show a weight. And because you can scale the same 4 to 20 from those transfers in different ways, this lets you show multiple uh, versions of that same information. So in this case, we've got 628 on the top, and it's going to flash to the units to let me know that we're discussing uh, gallons per minute. But in addition to gallons per minute, I really want to see cubic feet per minute. And so the bottom screen is telling me I've got 83.9 cubic feet per minute. And all those are coming out of the same flow transfer. The loop leader is also capable of some control applications because it's got two solid state relays available for it. So let me say that one again. This is a loop powered two wire meter that's capable of control applications thanks to the fact that even though it's just a two wire meter dropping a few volts off the loop, it's got solid state relay outputs. And so in this case what we're doing is we've got the level transmitter feeding into the loop leader. And then we've got the solid state outputs driving external control relays, which turn a main pump and a backup pump on and off for pump alternation control of the tank. We've also got some open collector outputs available on the loop leader, and those are going off to trigger high alarms, uh, likely at a PLC or some other digital input device. So what happens here is every time your level gets to that on state of 8.5 feet, it's going to turn on one of the pumps, and it's going to turn off that pump at 3.5 feet. Every time you reach that new state, it's going to cycle which one of those pumps turns on. In the case of going over that initial on state, you can program in, let's say this example, at 13 feet. I'm going to turn both pumps on because Either this is for a sump and I'm in a rainstorm and my sump can't keep up with just one pump, or perhaps one of my pumps has had a problem and it's not pumping at full capacity or it's seized up. So all right, at this high alarm level, I want you to turn on both of those pumps regardless. And of course, if things keep going higher, you can have it set up so that it triggers the high alarm. And with those alarms, I get my red backlight, I get my custom uh, message for what happens in my alarm state, letting me know I have a high level in this case. And you can also, by the way, you get low alarms, of course, as well, which is what we're doing with the second open collector output. So if one of the pumps, for example, doesn't turn off when it should have, in this case, going past 3.5 feet and staying on because of some kind of system failure, it's going to turn on that low alarm at one feet. Or one foot. So it makes a great pump controller, despite the fact that it's just a two-wire display. Here, we're showing how you can display flow rate and total at the same time, because we're talking about a dual-line display here. So the top line, I've got 935, and then it's going to toggle to show you that we're looking at gallons. I'm sorry, gallons per minute. And then in the bottom line, I've got my total, which is in units of gallons, as it toggles back and forth. And one of the nice features that you'll see about that lower display, which is extremely useful if you're actually trying to read this in the field, is that we have commas in line with the digits. So you don't have to find a decimal place and then start counting to try to figure out if you're talking hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands. The commas instantly let you understand that we're talking 40 million in this case. Now, one of these features, the 1.5 volt drop, requires you to understand a little bit about how these loops work. And so I'm going to walk you through this one a little bit. The 1.5 volt drop allows you to be installed in existing 4 to 20 milliamp loops, or even planned 4 to 20 milliamp loops, with other loop powered equipment without causing a major disruption to the system. So what do I mean by that? Well, the 1.5 volt drop on the loop leader refers to how much voltage it's going to drop around that 4 to 20 milliamp loop in order to have enough power to turn itself on without changing the current that's going through the system. Well, thinking about other items in the loop that have voltage, I know my power supply is usually going to be 24 volts. So let's assume I have a 24 volt power supply. 
So that's letting me know that this power supply is capable of driving 24 volts. Well, I only need 1.5 volts of that for my loop leader. However, if I've got a two-wire transmitter, for example, let's say this level transmitter, if this is a two-wire device, it might be dropping 18 volts. And I might be putting that through some kind of an isolator, which let's say that isolator is going to take up one volt. And then I've got a chart recorder in here, and let's say that's also going to take up uh, two volts. Well, I can now start doing the math and say, well, I need 18 volts for my transmitter, 19 when I include my uh, barrier in this case. Now I'm up to 21 when I add in the 2 volts for that chart recorder. And I'm adding my 1.5 volt drops for the loop leader, so I'm at 22.5, and I'm at about the limit of what I should be using for a 24 volt transmitter. So if I were a loop power meter that drew any more than 1.5 volts, which there are plenty out there who draw more than that, I wouldn't be able to install it in this loop. I'd install it, and my current would drop out because I no longer have enough voltage in my power supply to drive all the different kinds of devices that are pulling a voltage drop off this current loop. So the current going through this entire loop is always going to be at whatever the transmitter regulates it to be. But I might run out of voltage in the system if I don't make sure that I have low enough loop drop or a volt drop device. Hopefully that explains to those of you who, who just know enough to get by, hopefully that explains why that 1.5 volt drop is so important. We mentioned before that though we are a loop power device, we've got relays. So now not only can we display information next to a tank or in a convenient location for whatever the process may be, but we can use those relays to either directly drive equipment or to uh, drive external control relays in order to set off sirens or alarms or to send signals back to PLCs in the control room. So now we're doing more than just displaying. We're controlling pumps. We're sending messages. We're turning on light stacks. And that's a great feature for a device that's so convenient and that generally is lower cost than you're going to find in a, a four-wire or an externally powered device. The loop leader's got a 4 to 20 milliamp output. And the advantage of that is that it lets you isolate two 4 to 20 milliamp loops. So in this case, we've got a power supply and a transmitter out in the field. We've got a loop power supply and a PLC back in the control room or inside of a control cabinet. And we can get electrical isolation from those two lines by using the loop leader. So now we're more noise resistant and we've prevented ground loops as I'm wiring up all these different systems into my PLC because I've got a separate isolated 4 to 20 milliamp in coming from our device that separates it out from the other power supply and the field transmitter. Programming these devices can be tough. It's not something you're familiar with. You have to deal with the, the seven segment displays. And granted, our, our alphanumeric display is going to help with that. But the best thing we do to help you program these devices is we offer free MeterView XL programming software. You can plug in to the USB port on the side of the meter, plug this into your computer, download the software, run it, and now you've got an easy way to program this meter that uses English language prompts and lays out everything in a very clear way on a clean screen so that you can program it to do exactly what you want it to do. And as you can see in that main screen on the left, you can then go see what your meter is set up for. You can set up your relays, your open collector outputs. Very handy if you're going to do pump optimization control and such because you can see all of those settings in one screen. And of course, another nice feature of the free programming software I should mention is you're capable of saving those configurations, loading them into the, the meters later. So if you're going to use multiples of these, you can just program one set and save it. And then every time you get one of the meters, just download the configuration into it. And you can even email that configuration file around so we can help with some troubleshooting with this at the factory. Worldwide approvals is a big one. One of the big draws of loop powered devices is that you can get them intrinsically safe and non incentive for a, a much lower price than you're going to find an equivalent explosion proof device. And we've got ATEX, IECEX, UL and CUL intrinsic safe and non incentive approvals. We've also got UL and CUL for safe area 
general electrical safety listings. So if you're a, a general UL panel shop who's putting things in the safe areas, we've got you covered there. However, if you want non-incentive or physically safe approvals for hazardous areas, the loop leader has you covered there as well. We have another series in the loop leader line here at Precision Digital. Uh, it's our older loop leader products. Uh, that's the single line display that you see there on the right with the amber colored display. Uh, and this unit is going to be replacing that. So if you're familiar with those older loop leaders, I would urge you to change over to the new one. Well, why would you want to do that if you're happy with the old loop leaders? Well, as you can see, there is a huge list of advantages. Uh, everything from price to the display style. In every way, including operating temperature ranges, the approvals that you can get on it, uh, this is a, a superior product with the more it can do for a lower price. So if you're familiar with that old line, you definitely want to switch over to the new one and start talking to your customers about that. So let's take a brief look at the different models available in the loop leader. Once again, you've got your 6602 for safe area and your 6606 for hazardous areas. And that's your process meter, basic decimal display. You get the two lines. You have all the options that we discussed available. Then you've got your feet and inches versions of it, your 6603 and 7, and the bar graph decimal versions of it, your 6604 and 8. If you're looking for a flow meter that can do rate and total, you've got your 6622 and 6626 for hazardous areas. That's your basic decimal display. And if you like the bar graph for your flow applications, where you're doing rate total, grand total, you've got your 6624 for safe areas and your 6628 or hazardous areas. All those, of course, are available on predig.com, and you can do some more research there, like down with your manuals, your data sheets, et cetera. Now, specifically for the distributors here, as most of you were distributors, I've got one slide here that makes note of some selling tools that we've got for you. Uh, the first one is customized flyers, because we do have a uh, one-page front and back flyer that talks about a lot of these loop leader features and gives you some talking points to discuss. And we are happy to customize that here for you. So if you get in touch with us, we will not only customize this for you, put your information on it for your company, but we can show you how to use our website to design these customized flyers for yourself, including others that we've got available for other new products. We have a new demo kit, so you can get up there and show someone what this looks like. You'll see this one's got two meters in it. Uh, it has the uh, process meter or rate totalizer on the top, and it's got the feet and inches version of it on the bottom, so you can show both displays, depending on what your customer's looking for. And it's got uh, slide potentiometers on it, so you can demonstrate things like the relays, the open collector outputs, and the pump alternation control capabilities that make it a great two-wire pump controller. We're also coming out with a loop leader selling guide, which is getting printed now, which will walk you through all sorts of interesting information, like what kind of customers are interested in this, some bullets for how to talk about it, and even some competitive analysis. So for those of you who really want to dive into this and show it to your top customers, we've got resources for you to do that. So if this looks interesting to you, where can you get more information about the loop leader? Well, predig.com, Precision Digital's website, is the best place to go. You can find data sheets, manuals, uh, read up on all the different model numbers, get pricing, you get availability. You can even see what we've got in stock and how long it will take us to build more stock if you order. You, of course, can email us at sales at predig.com. You can call us at 1-800-343-1001. Or if you want to talk to me directly about this, the loop leader, uh, the technical issues of 420 loops, or anything else, or even just give feedback on the webinar, uh, here's my personal contact information so you can get in touch with me. With that, I thank you very much for attending. Hopefully this has been useful for you and that it taught you a little bit about 4 to 20 loops, a little bit about the loop leader itself, and I'm hoping it gave you some ideas about our customers or distributors may have who are interested in it, or for those end users out there, some applications where this might make your life a little bit easier or that of your operators. If you've got any other questions, uh, you can contact us any way you see here, and if you have submitted questions in the chat that I did not get a chance to answer, uh, we will do some follow-up with you on those because they were a little too complicated for us to address on air and have it make sense to everyone. So thank you very much. I appreciate the time, and you all have a good afternoon.